Hey, my name is Drew, founder of Husband Material, where I help men outgrow porn. Today, we are talking about something completely different, something fun to celebrate because the Husband Material podcast is officially two years old. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to everyone who has written a review helping me to promote this podcast. And thank you for providing me with amazing feedback so that I can continue to make this podcast better. To celebrate, I want to have a little fun. I want to talk about my favorite animal, the northern elephant seal. My favorite animal used to be a giraffe, partly because that was my nickname at Wheaton College. And partially because I actually really like giraffes. I think they're awesome. But in the last few years, my imagination has been absolutely captivated by northern elephant seals. And functionally, they have become my favorite animal. I used to despise them. I used to think they were weird, fat, lazy, and gross. When I would watch little clips of them on a nature documentary or see them on Google images, I was like, what is that animal and why did God put that on the earth? But now, I love them. I admire them. I actually appreciate them and I enjoy learning so much about them. In fact, for my whole life, I have always had a joy and a deep pleasure in learning animal facts. And when I first started learning about the elephant seals, it blew my mind. And this has become something of a metaphor for me. If you have ever struggled with contempt for yourself, if you've ever felt weird, fat, lazy, or gross, good for nothing, if you ever wondered if you have any value or if you even deserve to exist, and I think you're going to get an insight here. You might just learn a really valuable lesson that God has taught me through the way he designed the Northern Elephant Seal. So in this episode, I want to tell you the story of my passion for elephant seals and show you a different side of who I am, the side that loves animal facts, and along the way to share the biggest lesson that God has taught me through these creatures. It all comes down to this. Every single part of the northern elephant seal is uniquely adapted for their survival. Even the parts that seem bizarre, even the parts that seem unnecessary are actually really, really important. They're part of what makes the elephant seal strong and good and beautiful. And I had no idea about this until I saw them in person. Here's how it happened. It all started when my little family of three at that time was driving south on Highway 1 along the coast of Central California, specifically the part known as Big Sur, where the huge, steep mountain cliffs jaggedly descend right down into the Pacific Ocean. And a little winding road traverses this dramatic scene. We were driving through Big Sur, enjoying the scenery, loving it. And when we got to the south end, I thought all the sightseeing was over. The best is behind us. And I had no idea what I was about to encounter. On the southern end of Big Sur, there was a little spot on the map that says elephant seal viewing. And I'm looking out of our window as the terrain flattens out. I see some big sausagey looking things just lying on the beach. And I looked over at Rebecca and talked to her about it. And we decided to park in the parking lot and get close to these things and see what they're like. So we got out of the car and we started looking at the seals. And the first thing I discovered was that not all of them have that huge nose on their face. The females are actually quite cute. As I would discover, the young males don't have that big nose either. They only develop it later as an adaptation for survival. But I had no idea about all that. I was just looking at the seals when I saw there was a docent, an interpreter, a volunteer who helps people understand what they are seeing and how these seals' lives work. 
So I started talking with the docent, asking him questions for about 25 minutes, and that is when I became utterly fascinated and I realized this animal is so dramatically different from any other seal and really from any other marine mammal. And I had no idea because I was so prejudiced. Why am I telling you this? First of all, because I just love elephant seals. But second of all, because every single part of you and me is adapted for survival too. Even the parts we don't like about ourselves. The anxiety, the anger, the shame, the sexualizer part, the inner critic, all of these parts of us are not bad. Sometimes we need an interpreter to help us understand what we are seeing. So in this episode, I will be your interpreter of God's grand design that we see in Northern elephant seals. And I will be quoting liberally from an article called seven things that may surprise you about elephant seals by Valerie Shore. And the link for that is in the show notes. I want to tell you everything I didn't like about elephant seals, and it comes down to four categories that I thought they were weird, fat, lazy, and gross. First of all, weird. In the words of Valerie Shore, it's not hard to laugh at the appearance of an adult male elephant seal. His massive head is dominated by a large bulbous nose that droops over his mouth when he's relaxed. It looks a bit like an elephant's trunk, which is how the species got its name. But don't let that goofy appearance fool you. When he's asserting his maleness, usually to rivals, he rears back his head and inflates that big schnoz like a balloon. Pointing the tip into his mouth, he uses it like a megaphone to make loud clapping belches that sound like bongo drums in a cave. It's his unique way of telling the younger lads, don't even think about coming near me or my girls. In other words, that big nose is his megaphone. It's what allows him to warn other seals and prevent having to go through so many fights, which is really important. And I like to think of it as kind of like a boxing glove. If you've ever seen these male elephant seals fight each other, they fight with their faces. They fight with their mouths. They're like biting each other's necks. So to have a little bit of protection right front and center, seems really strategic to me. And that was one of the biggest things that surprised me. This part of their body that the world looks at and doesn't understand helps them tremendously. It allows them to fight. Why do they fight? In order to reproduce. I like to think that the male elephant seals fight for love. And that's part of why they have to be so big. That leads me to the second thing. I thought they were weird and fat. Males and females are very, very different. This is called sexual dimorphism. Males weigh up to 6,000 pounds of blubber, fur, and bones. That's about the same as 44 average-sized humans. And they're about 14 feet long in the biggest ones, roughly twice the size of a king-size bed. And why? They need to weigh more so they can win more. And in order to gain this weight, male elephant seals migrate from Baja, Mexico, and Southern California all the way up the coastal shelf to the Gulf of Alaska and the Aleutian Islands. This allows them to bulk up on bigger food than they could get out in the deep part of the Pacific Ocean. The problem is, it also exposes them to more threats, specifically orcas and other predators like great white sharks. And as a result, male elephant seals get eaten more than females. They take a greater amount of risk to gain a greater amount of weight, to have a greater chance of winning a battle in order to have the right to reproduce. Females, on the other hand, are three to four times smaller than the males, but still not exactly small, weighing as much as 1,600 pounds and just over nine feet in length. Females don't have to fight off as many big predators, 
their migration is actually longer in its duration, but it goes way, way out where the predators are not to be found to the far reaches of the Pacific Ocean. That point on the map, when you look at a globe that's like farthest from all land in the middle of a Pacific Ocean, that's where the females migrate to. They go out there to access reliable food sources way, way, way down where other animals don't reach. They eat squid thousands of feet down under the surface. And the whole time they're on this migration, by the way, they're pregnant. Elephant seals are the only mammals in the world that migrate twice per year. And here I was thinking they're lazy. Not at all. They're unlike any other seal. Harbor seals and sea lions don't stray far from land. They go to sleep on the beach every night. Elephant seals spend over 80% of their lives out in the ocean. And up to 90% of that time, deep under the surface. They are out there hunting 24-7 for most of the year, not coming even close to the shore. Do you see how this animal is the opposite of lazy? The northern elephant seal is a world-class endurance athlete, but nobody would know it just by watching the videos of them lying around on the sand, flipping sand onto themselves to try to stay cool in the middle of a sunny day. Nobody would think that, but it's true. And all I needed was an interpreter to show me. They are not lazy. They journey alone. One in three males do not return because they migrate along that coastal shelf and have to face greater threats. One in six females do not return. And I love how the males and females are brave in different ways. The males have to avoid orcas like all the time and they have to fight each other. The females are brave in a different way. When they come to shore, it's not exactly a lazy time for them because they have to give birth, nurse their pups, sometimes losing up to half of their body weight. Because remember, when they're on the shore, they're fasting. They're not eating anything. Nursing a pup who's gaining 10 pounds per day. That's why when you look at the elephant seals, sometimes the babies look almost the same size as the mothers. And then after nursing, before they go out on another migration, they will be impregnated again. That's a lot of activity. And that's one of the most unique things about elephant seals is that a lot of animals in the natural world have these amazing life cycles and biological processes. We just don't have as much access to it. With the seals on the beach at San Simeon, we have access to a lot. And when I go visit them in January, I hope I get to see a birth. <laughs> or maybe I'll see one on the live e-seal webcam. I'm including a link to that in the show notes. <sighs> it's just so cool. Another thing that makes elephant seals seem less appealing, kind of gross, is their skin. Every year on the beach, they have what is technically called a catastrophic molt. They shed their skin all at once, not throughout the year, just in a short period of time and it comes off in patches and flakes until they get a new one. And it looks really gross. Why? Why do they do this? Well, because they need it, of course, because it's an adaptation for survival. But how? It's all part of their unique abilities as deep sea divers. That skin is like a specially designed wetsuit that allows them, especially the female seals, to dive to almost six thousand feet. That's deeper than great white sharks. That's deeper than any mammal except some of the big whales. And while the average dive time is 23 minutes, the longest dive recorded by a female elephant seal is almost two hours. So how do they navigate bone crushing depths in the pitch black of the deep ocean and <laughs> forage down there for a ton of different types of food, especially squid? They do it partially with a very unique wetsuit which gets replaced every year. Elephant seals prey on deep water marine mammals, such as squid, ratfish, and sharks, and also 
diving deep allows them to get away from predators who can't follow them down, down, down into the depths. And by the way, that is why their eyes are so big and their whiskers are so long. Can you see how every single part of this animal is adapted for their survival? Now, just to be clear, I don't like everything about elephant seals. <laughs> They're not perfect. Male elephant seals, in particular, do not treat females very well. And, sadly, they've even been known to crush their offspring while doing those rhythmic belly flops along the beach with thousands of pounds of pressure. Let me just say they're not exactly the type of husband and father I want to imitate. So while their design is nearly flawless, their behavior can be quite bad. So to say that all parts of them are good is not to say that all of their behavior is good. And it's the same with us. Here's the biggest lesson that I've learned from all of this that I want you to take away. Every single part of you and me, even the strange and ugly parts we don't like very much, even the sexualized parts have played a role in helping us survive, helping us adapt, or else they wouldn't be there. These parts of us are not bad. Sometimes we just need an interpreter to help us understand what we are seeing. Isn't that true for our sexuality? Sometimes we just need an interpreter to help us understand why certain sexual fantasies, attractions, impulses, and behaviors are there. In some ways, I feel like that is a superpower that I've been able to develop. Part of the core value of husband material is being able to understand what we are seeing in our sexual struggles, in our sexual brokenness, and to validate that while there is brokenness, at the same time, there is beauty. And elephant seals have helped me to see that. They inspire me to be brave, to be willing to go deep, even into the darkest places. Elephant seals are an example to me of resting and recharging when I need it. They remind me to stay close to others when I can. And also to journey out into the unknown even if I have to do it alone. And most of all, elephant seals inspire me to adapt and to survive. Because the greatest strength of all is survival. In the words of Valerie Shore, what makes seeing an elephant seal so special is that we almost lost them. In the 19th century, they were slaughtered by the hundreds of thousands for their blubber, which was rendered into lamp oil. Understandably, their numbers nosedived and they were declared extinct in 1884. Then, surprise, in 1892, a scientific expedition discovered nine elephant seals on Mexico's Guadalupe Island. Inconceivably, the team killed seven of the seals for specimens, but once again, the seals endured. A remnant population somewhere between 20 and 100 was later discovered on Guadalupe and given protection by Mexico and the U.S. What this means is that all the northern elephant seals we see today an estimated 170,000 of them all along the Pacific coast are descendants of those few lucky survivors. How is that for a comeback story? My friend, you and I are survivors. The fact that you are still here means that there is hope. Your story's not over. And just like the elephant seals, you can make a comeback. You can adapt and change and find a way to thrive because you our God's beloved son. And in you, he is well pleased.